George Lucas created Star Wars, and that's the part everyone knows. Whether they love his storytelling for the original trilogy or enjoy his creative world building from the prequels, everyone knows that George Lucas has incredible storytelling capabilities. Along with many, many quirks and awkward decisions for those stories. For every attack on the Death Star, there's a cringeworthy CGI alien getting way too close to the camera during her musical number. And for every battle on Mustafar, there's a Jar Jar Binks stepping in poop. Very bad. Oh. Oh. George Lucas's work has always been a mixed bag, to say the least. His creativity is off the charts, his themes are as deep as any classic story, and the writing is... well, let's just say the writing takes a lot of interesting directions at times. All of this is, and has always been, super clear from the Star Wars saga. But regular Star Wars? That's just George Lucas bouncing ideas off other people, working with a huge team, fighting hard deadlines, and trying to make successful movies to get the money back from making them. Bizarre and creative as the Star Wars saga was, believe it or not, that's just the corporate version of George Lucas. For the truest, most unfiltered George Lucas Star Wars, you have to go to the Clone Wars. We've got bounty hunters, Jedi, Sith, giant monsters, Mandalorians, tons of planets, weird little aliens, space battles, and everything else you can possibly imagine, and then some more. The Clone Wars TV show was George Lucas just hanging out near retirement and deciding to throw the kitchen sink at his creation for one last hurrah on the way out. Sure, there were tons of artists and animators, but they all worked to make George's vision. And sure, Dave Filoni was the main showrunner, but he prides himself on being George's closest apprentice. This was George's show. And it gets as kooky and creative as George Lucas himself could be. It has extreme highs, like learning more about the history of the Force, developing Anakin's relationships with Obi-Wan and Padme, and exploring Anakin's views conflicting with the Jedi Order from the start. And then for some reason, we also have this. Much you love. I thought you were coming back for me. Our separation last time was uh, a bit abrupt, and I do blame Jabba for that. This show was weird, and this show was great. It can make you laugh, it can make you cry, make you inspired, make you disgusted, or make you cringe, but all of that is wrapped up in the seven seasons of George Lucas's masterpiece. It hits at the core of what makes George Lucas's work so good. He doesn't play it safe, trying to make fan-favorite episodes and characters just for the sake of pleasing fans in a shallow way. But he also doesn't go out of his way to create hated characters or to disrespect the fans who like the story as it is. George Lucas tells stories by taking whatever ideas he has, quickly filtering them through to get rid of the worst ones, and then publishing whatever's left, no matter how strange or crazy or idiosyncratic it might be. Anakin gets a Padawan who becomes the new main character even though she's not in any movie? Of course, let's do it. Anakin, the former slave, gets disguised as a slave owner for a Jedi mission? Sure, why not? Jabba the Hutt's giant creepy weird mom for no reason? Throw her in the show. Freaky Geonosian queen that makes no sense and gives kids nightmares? Why not, let's try it. Godzilla and Star Wars? Eh, what the heck. An arc all about clone troopers that ends with almost every single one of them dying in brutal ways? Sure, the kids will love it. An entire episode dedicated to the twisted criminal romance of Jabba the Hutt's annoying uncle and the weird singer alien from Return of the Jedi? Yeah, you get the idea. While most creators try limiting themselves to within the realm of reason for their stories, George Lucas takes another direction. And that's why he's so successful. While most writers think inside the box, some are brave enough to step outside and create something truly great. And then there's George Lucas, who climbs out of the box, cuts it up, colors it with markers, and then runs around the house yelling, Pew pew, look everyone, I made a spaceship. Creative minds without restriction don't always make great work. George Lucas has put out a lot of duds and a lot of weird things. A lot of the scenes in Star Wars and even more episodes of The Clone Wars are kind of creepy, weird, unnecessary, or childish filler that should have just been scrapped in the writer's room. 
And similarly, a lot of really good moments ended up as deleted scenes to make more time for these weird things that we didn't need. But that weirdness coming through is what also allows for all those incredibly moving moments to happen too. It's telling that of the Star Wars George Lucas had the most direct control over, the Clone Wars, the one that he claims is his favorite arc in that show is by far the weirdest, and to most people, including me, one of the worst in the show. A team of astromech and pit droids from the Republic are sent on a mission led by a tiny washed up alien officer who discriminates against droids. This four episode arc takes them to the weird edges of time and space with the goofy clumsy comic relief droid eventually proving his worth and putting the little alien officer in place to prove that droids can do good things. It ends with the ragtag team saving Anakin, Obi-Wan, and also the future Grand Moff Tarkin from getting blown up by an entire capital ship filled with explosives. Oh, and along the way, they team up with an elite clone trooper from the Old Republic Commando video game. But he has amnesia and he works at a diner. It's all very weird and off the wall, with no connection whatsoever to the greater overall Star Wars story or the Clone Wars. You could really just skip all four episodes easily with no impact to the story in any way. And it's not just weird, it's also pretty slow and boring for the most part. Just a lot of droids trudging around orange landscapes with not much going on. But then again, that's George Lucas, isn't it? That's where this all started. And even though this arc is definitely skippable, completely irrelevant, and has some of the worst episodes in the entire series, it's still George's favorite. And that gives it some special heart and connection to the rest of the show, even though it might not seem like it at first glance. This is the weirdness that we need, even if this particular set wasn't my favorite. Because the weirdness that created this arc is the same weirdness that allowed us to get two guys fighting with glowing sticks on a planet made of lava. So, the next time you're watching a weird scene in a Star Wars movie or a weird episode of The Clone Wars, remember that that weirdness and discomfort is just the cost of entry to that incredible galaxy far, far away. You can't have the amazing good creativity without some amazingly bizarre offshoots, and so for that I will be forever grateful to them. Even if it does make me want to skip episodes or fast forward sometimes. The charm of an animated film is the fact that it's done in a particular style, an artistic style. In this case, we went retro into the 50s and 60s, and they're very, very, very stylized. And I think that's what animation does best. It's the thing that it can do that live action can't do. But now there's more Star Wars analysis you can choose from on screen. Or let me know in the comments what your favorite and least favorite Clone Wars episodes are. Until next time, this is Deep Dive, signing off.